Good morning, St. Francis, and good morning, people of God. It is Wednesday, the 29th day of March 2023, Wednesday of the fifth week of Lent. Uh, there are eight days, including today, uh, left of the season of Lent. Um, uh, coming to you, uh, it is the, also the uh, 32nd day of Lent. So we have kind of eight days, uh, eight days left. So the 32nd day of Lent. Uh, coming to you from the Memorial Garden. Um, as you can see, it is becoming more and more spring light, more and more beautiful um, as we move uh, through this month. In that corner right there are the bricks that are going to uh, surround uh, the great fire on the Easter Vigil. So they're already out here. I believe they were out here for the burning of the mortgage too this past weekend. Uh, but uh, in uh, a couple of days time, uh, the great fire of the Easter Vigil will be uh, placed there in the corner or around there and the bricks will make sure it doesn't go any further than it needs to. So um, the uh, Palm Sunday will also, one of the masses I think of Palm Sunday will begin out here um, in the courtyard too, uh, in, in the Memorial Garden. Uh, so uh, today's today's readings, we go back to the book of Daniel and um, we've we've been there before, well, we've been there a couple of times during the season of Lent and uh, the same thing with King Nebuchadnezzar trying to, the, the King of Babylon, trying to basically make um, uh, some segment of the Jewish people um, obey his his commands and things like that and I think I was trying to find it I can't remember but if you look back in the other reflections you can probably see it I think it was Daniel who was being persecuted then with other people um, there was a well yes maybe that was it there was a well that Jacob that uh, Daniel was thrown into um, and I guess he was able to get out of it this this now is the passage of the fiery furnace and Daniel isn't there uh, but but our three young men uh, who refuse to worship an idol uh, that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up again I can only imagine how frustrating it is for King Nebuchadnezzar to deal with all of these Israelites who do not want to do anything that he says that they should do and who are defiant even to the point of death uh, that were against his rules and regulations. Um, but they are the ones, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, um, I think that's it, uh, the ones who were then uh, thrown into this fiery furnace, heated seven times, ten times more than usual uh, to destroy them, and they don't die uh, because one who looks like a son of man is also with them in the furnace protecting them. Um, and that makes Nebuchadnezzar believe, um, or come to believe, uh, that the God of Israel perhaps is a little bit more powerful than him or his other gods or his idols or whatever it is. Um, Again, that that persistence, that defiance, that that ability to stand for what it is that we believe, um, does it lead to dire situations? It probably can at times, um, but it doesn't mean that we don't stand up for what it is that we believe in other ways. Um, to be defiant in what it is that we believe, and not because it is a political, social, uh, whatever kind of thing that we believe, but because it is what is right. It is what is. Uh, truth. It is what allows for humanity uh, to flourish, to become what God intends us to become. Um, that is what we stand for. That is what we are called to stand for always as believers in the world, which is not sectarian. It is not uh, denominational. It is not uh, particular. It is not um, uh, national or whatever it is. Um, it is something that is about all people, all humanity, uh, creating God's image and God's likeness um, and basically redeemed and saved uh, by the God who comes to be part of our life. Uh, Lent kind of again points us in the direction of trying to be people who can be defiant in faith, defiant over the doubters, defiant over those who seek to ridicule or to mock or to twist or to turn our faith into something that it is not, um, to be defiant in knowing uh, that our God always wins in the end and our God wins with life, our God wins with hope, our God wins with joy, with mercy, with grace. In the gospel, we have this interesting kind of conversation where there seems to be Jewish people who are trying to follow Jesus or listen to him, and he kind of is sort of, he challenges them more so about why it is that they are following him or why it is that they are believing in him. And again, it's a very dicey move for Jesus because it could lose whatever supporters he has, and it probably does. Um, but again, belief in Jesus is not belief in him just because it seems to be the trendy thing to do or it seems to be something that's going to, um, you know, further their own interests or get what it is that they want for themselves in a different kind of way. Um, Jesus challenges them with truth and challenges them with being who they say they are. Again, they call themselves children of Abraham, but yet he says they also want to kill him. If they were children of Abraham, they would not want to kill him. They would be people who understood um, exactly what Jesus is doing um, and respond to it likewise in their own relationships with other people. Uh, again, trying to pretend you know, that our faith can be useful for us in our own particular ways is not faith itself and not what Jesus asks. Um, and in this kind of very pointed moment, again, in John's Gospel, where Jesus is trying to 
push the Jews into understanding the Jewish people, the, the, the Israelites, into understanding who and what he is, um, he perhaps makes more enemies than he does friends. Uh, but he remains true to his mission and true to the challenge um, that being a part of God's life calls us to. May we be people who always you know, rise to what it is that God calls us to do, to be people who not seek after our own needs or our own designs or our own pursuits or our own ambitions, but people who take the life that God gives us and use it to bring life to others. And may the Lord give you his peace.